Hello YouTube. Today we're going to look at the Bursa Thunder 380. This is a blowback operated, so fixed barrel. Uh, it's a, a double single action with a decocker built into the safety. So the safe not only uh, makes it safe, but it will drop the hammer into a position where it can't reach the firing pin as opposed to the normal position where it can. Um, so without further ado, uh, it's easier to take it down if it is cocked and this is the takedown lever it is spring-loaded at all times so you have to hold it down then bring the slide all the way to the back and lift off if that lever is not down it doesn't come quite as far back and you can't lift it up so that lever gives you an extra little bit of clearance so that you can get it off of the rails at which point um, you just let it slide off the front of the gun Put the frame aside for later, recoil spring just slips right off, and uh, the slide. Um, so let's take out that extractor first. I will save you a little bit of heartache and let you know that that pin comes out from the bottom up. Do not drive it down through the gun. The top of the pin is a little bit wider than the rest of it, and so if you drive it down through the gun, there's only a finite number of times you can do that before the pin will no longer uh, stay where it's supposed to be. So we will drive it up through the top, put a finger over the extractor so we don't launch our spring across the world, and there we go. There's the extractor. Extractor spring is small, and it does have a recessed hole that it sits in, and the uh, coil has a small coil end and a large coil end. The small coil is the top. Uh, it's designed to just push right on the back of the extractor just like that. Um, so, uh, And the pin itself, if you look really carefully, um, if you run your fingernail along it or something like that, you should be able to feel that that last, there's a, there's a ridge right towards the top of the pin where the pin is wider. Now don't confuse it with just the wear mark where it lines up with the extractor on the bottom. One end of that pin is ever so slightly larger and you should be able to feel that when your, when your nail goes over it. Um, the safety slash decocker uh, works as a safety because as you see the firing pin is there and with the safety activated there's a shelf which means the hammer cannot reach the firing pin safety is down then things can reach the firing pin when the safety is on it's poking too far back out it's going to block things from getting that far the decocker action is this part over here on the safety specifically this part where you can see a little wear mark so this is all carved out uh, when the safety is off and it's in the fire position as you move it on this uh, this ledge comes up and will interact with a piece in the frame and push it into the frame that causes it to decock. And uh, then, of course, there's our standard firing pin safety. To get all of this apart, um, the safety itself has a permanent detent on the same side as the lever. Uh, and so there's a spring-loaded detent basically sitting between the, uh, the site and the hole where the safety is and it's not going to come out of the gun, thank God. Uh, when you take this off, keep a thumb over the firing pin safety. If it's clean, it will, it's free to launch out. If it's dirty, it might stay in on its own, but I just cleaned this thing, so it will launch across the room. And of course, same with the firing pin. You kind of want to make sure that neither of those has a very good launch trajectory. So to get it out, with uh, basically you're going to move it out the same way um, so as you move it from safe to, to, or to decock, from fire to safe rather, on the way back, if you lift out at the same time, the safety will begin to start to move out of the gun. And so uh, it will also go farther to the rear beyond its normal range of motion. So we just keep twisting it, working it out, and it will come all the way out of the gun. And there you can get a view of that detent we were talking about. That should not come out of the gun. It's designed to be permanently in there. It's wider than the hole remaining. And so now you have the firing pin safety and the uh, striker, excuse me, the firing pin itself, which if we 
there we go. We depress the firing pin safety just a little bit and the firing pin can clear it. And then the safety itself should come out with its spring. So uh, how does the safety interact with the striker? Um, whoops. Essentially uh, like this. You see how there's two different ridges on the striker. Uh, the safety rides in, in, the, in the one closest to the middle until something pushes it out of the way and then it can go all the way to the back. Which means the striker can only come this far forward unless something pushes the safety up and that gives it that last little just that that's the whole difference between the firing pin safety on and off and that's just enough for it to clear the breech face and have the, the pin actually come out. If you need to get this spring off, remember to always turn springs in the direction that would open up the coils uh, as you're pulling them off. And same when you're putting them back on. If you turn uh, the other way, you're tightening the coil, means it's gonna, the spring's going to grab onto the, to the pin even harder. So turn in the direction that would spread them open as you slide it off and back on. Make your springs last a little longer. Um, there's not a whole lot else here. These are the two big hefty detents, uh, detent holes rather, on the safety so that it has a very snappy uh, on and off. <clears throat> so getting it back together, um, since we're doing this upside down, the grooves for the firing pin safety are on the bottom of how we're looking at it or the top of the gun. And then this curved bit, you also want facing up while we're upside down because that's the part that the uh, cylindrical body of the uh, safety rolls into. So it sits like that. So anyway, we're gonna tuck that in, uh, not all the way um, because we need clearance to get the firing pin safety in. So we're gonna leave it hanging out the back as we guide this in. and. The real challenge here is to just make sure the spring doesn't drop free before we get it in there far enough. And then the other part is to make sure that it stayed more or less lined up. So you don't want it twisted around. The flat part need, you know, needs to be towards the inside. So once you've got that lined up, you'll be able to uh, slide this firing pin in and out. So when the firing pin's about... Whoa, my fat fingers aren't going to do this. I'm going to use my punch to hold the firing pin safety down and try and guide the firing pin in far enough. And if we can get it to the right spot, it will actually engage with the safety and they will kind, kind of hang on to each other, unlike what I just demonstrated. It is springing up into my face. Let's try that again. that guy in afterwards this time so firing pin safety in place and yeah the tricky part is is it if the firing pin safety is pushed down into the, the passage at all it's going to kind of block the the way for this and so uh, what's the best way to do this Just orienting my firing pin safety. I'm going to let most of the firing pin get in there. And I'm going to see if I can cheat as we go here. I'm going to push it into the point where it should be able to slip by. There we go. So <clears throat> what I just did there is... Uh, well, let me just undo it and show you again. So we're going to put the firing pin in on its side um, so that it can slip past so that the safety and the firing pin can go down essentially together. And so we're going to get it into that point um, and push down on the safety. And what you should see is the firing pin will rotate with it 
and then the firing pin will somewhat hold it in place but not really well so stuff your finger in there and hang on to it for now as we start this in we're going to start the safety in we're going to get it past its detent and then with our third hand we're going to come in here and hold the firing pin in as we move the safety even further into place until the safety is in far enough that it'll hold the firing pin in place now everything is held in by the safety and we keep working our safety in until it snaps in place and then everything is working don't worry if the firing pins a little cattywampus uh, like this one is a little angled off that's still fine if we push down on the firing pin uh, it ain't uh, let me take it off safe push down the firing pin no protrusion from the beach face unless we also have the firing pin safety depressed at which point then we can get the firing pin coming all the way out where we can see him just there so that's the firing pin safety and safety and deconker now the extractor put back in the same way remembering that the small end is the top whoops make sure it drops into its little hole there is a recess for it make sure that it's seated in there so that it doesn't go wandering around um, then lay the safety down on top of it and compress uh, compress the spring and again looking at your pin finding the the fat side is the top the pin will drop in now if it only drops to there you're not through the extractor yet when you're through the extractor, and what I'm doing here is I just move the extractor back and forth, the pin will drop down to just about flush with the rib or, or even a little beyond. And at that point, you know not only has the pin gone down through the slide, but it's also holding the extractor in. When it's up a little bit, it doesn't have the extractor yet. It's sitting on the extractor. When the extractor is perfectly aligned, it'll push down that little rest of the way so that you can do this and manipulate it before you actually get around to tapping it into place and it should stop at just a little bit uh, you know <clears throat> a little bit below flush uh, with the top of the slide and that's our slide switching back to the the frame um, the one thing about the recoil spring, I just slid it off, there is a directionality to it. So if, you, if it's like this and it's bouncing back and forth, your spring is backwards. The spring will hang on to the barrel. Not super tight on this one, and don't forget, you know, lube that when you go back in. But, um, and again, to make sure you scratch it as little as possible, when you do this, again, spin it in the direction that would make the spring open up a little bit wider. So, uh, grips, just unscrew. Now, I think the original might have wooden grips or plastic grips, but obviously they don't have this joining piece. That's part of the, the Crimson Trace stuff. In any case, it shouldn't matter. Just pop off both grips, and uh, nothing should immediately launch out of the gun with just the grips off. There's nothing. While the grips are critical to the functioning of the gun, the gun will not function with the grips off and it can actually get damaged. Um, they're not directly holding in like a giant spring like some guns do. So on this one I just kind of have to peel them both off. This is the battery cover. Okay, so that's my grips. Toss them aside for now. Set our screws aside. And uh, let's talk about some of the various bits that we can see and why the grips actually matter. Um, the, the trigger bar here, <clears throat> nothing is holding it up against the gun except uh, the grips and these two little rail extensions. This is the disconnector, but this up here actually rides below the level of the slide. So the slide itself holds the front of this in. But this end on the back is still a little bit free to move back and forth, and it can come away from the gun. So if you noticed that, uh, so if this grip panel on the right side is loose, this can move off, which means the disconnector is not going to be where it's supposed to be, and all manner of bad things happen. Now, if I just start pulling the trigger, the whole thing starts to come away. This comes away really fast. Just a few trigger pulls, and now that's walked 
right right out of the gun. But again, the frame will hold, or excuse me, the slide will hold that in. But your grips really are doing double duty here, holding this thing in position to keep it from drifting too far off and making sure that that disconnector stays where it's supposed to be now. And this one, the disconnector is obviously one out in the fight on the slide. It should normally only ever ride in here in this nice groove and then be pushed down as it actually disconnects. Something bad has obviously happened to this one in its life because the disconnector has worn a huge path through the gun. So this has seen a little abuse in its time. Uh, the disconnector itself is... Uh, so this is our firing pin safety here. This will lift up to push the safety button. This is the disconnector. And the disconnector kind of rolls down on that piece. So I should be able to take a punch and just push it. And if I can get it at the right angle... Back. Mm -hmm. oh, I don't want to smash my thumb at the same time is the problem of why I'm being such a wuss here. There, it will disconnect. I was hanging on to it so I wouldn't crush my finger in the process. So the disconnector doesn't have to move very far, but it does have a lot of force against it to overcome the ramp that it's in on the trigger. So if I pull it back just a little, it makes it easier to push the disconnect. But you'll see how that works. The point is that when we flip that switch, we're not, you know, move, we're not changing this space a whole lot. It goes from there to simply the height of the curve as the curve comes down, but there's, you know, that's a good way to put force on that piece uh, over over a little bit of time so that it goes down and dis uh, <clears throat> decocks everything. Okay, so what else? Um, this, don't take this out. Um, by design, it's, it, it's uh, ribbed in the middle here, which it would shred the side of the aluminum uh, if you knocked it out so just leave it in there um, what else do we not want to take out we're not going to disassemble the uh, release we're not going to disassemble it all the way but, or this safety system just because they are very very difficult to do anything with without actually removing the barrel and even if you knock this pin out chances are your barrel is not just going to slip out the barrel is generally pressed into this lug that pin orients it but does not, it's not the only thing retaining the barrel. There's a lot of tooling required to actually change these barrels out. So we're gonna leave those mechanisms alone simply because uh, you can't get them all the way out. You can get this lever part out <clears throat> if for some reason you wanted to, but what you wouldn't be able to do is get the actual piece that it, it manipulates. So this brings this down and there's a big spring under this, but with the barrel in the way, that's not coming out of the gun. So there's no reason to disassemble that and this whole fire safe thing. We will manipulate this a little bit as we get the trigger out because it kind of gets in the way, but we're not going to take it out of the gun for the same reason. All of its spring mechanisms are tied up by the barrels and we're not going to take the barrel off right now. Uh, let's see, what else? I think that's it. Everything else is coming out. So um, this is the magazine safety uh, operating down here. And it, it uh, grabs the back of the trigger bar and, and is pulling it down. So when something lets the magazine safety come up, well, again, because the side isn't on, but the, the trigger bar will come up. So the magazine safety is holding it down. With the magazine safety activated by the magazine, it can come up. Uh, this spring is also semi-permanently attached, so we will only undo this spring from the trigger bar. We won't actually remove this spring from the barrel so let's go ahead and we're going to defeat the magazine safety just so that we can release the hammer so i just lift it up on the trigger bar held the hammer pulled the trigger let it come down that just takes the pressure off things this spring here is is clipped into the bottom of the trigger bar so i'm going to lift that out and just set it a little bit to the inside so that i can grab the trigger bar and i should be able to maneuver manipulate the trigger bar straight out of the gun at this point like that so that spring was lying in that notch and now it's just flopping around in here 
uh, that's it with none of its pressure and let's see uh, the magazine safety let's go ahead and remove that because it's doing something a little bit tricky <clears throat> the magazine safety spring is a big curve spring there's a recess in the frame and then there's a hole on the inside of the magazine safety so this spring just comes around in a big loop and then makes a tiny little 90 degree turn upwards to go into that hole if you just try to push this out of the way you really are only manipulating this last quarter inch of the spring and you'll put a permanent bend in it so don't do that you're actually going to free the entire spring from the top this little end clips over to give you something to grab onto and essentially uh, you can come in here and pop it out of its groove and take the spring out uh, obviously someone before me just mangled the spring a little bit because it's clearly bent but that's how that's what you're supposed to do now there's nothing holding the magazine safety in so it should slide right down and out now notice the width of this changes at the at the end here and that these wider bits are also angled down that's because there's a dovetail in the frame itself these are designed to ride in that dovetail I'm putting it in upside down I'm not even sure yeah it's actually not all the way through so it'll ride in that dovetail so this part the middle body doesn't do anything but at the very end it's engaging in that dovetail and can't come out there's a similar set of dovetails up at the top uh, that does the same thing at the same width just up here in the frame and so when this piece is completely in place both sets of dovetails will be in the frame so when you're putting it back in make sure that both the bottom and the top are aligned and then the spring on top of it so anyway don't pull this just rip it straight off slide it down a little bit to clear those dovetails um, the safety we can probably just pop the safety out pretty easily it's similar to how the 1911 safeties work this screw um, it's actually clockwise instead of counterclockwise like on a 1911 but the point is this screw is actually uh, has a an edge on it a little ledge that's sticking into the frame we're gonna rotate the screw which will actually bring that ledge into the body of the magazine release itself and thereby uh, clear it so that the whole thing can come out so in case that made no sense it'll make sense when I show you from this angle so when this is in the gun this screw turns like that and this is where the magazine normally rides so or actually magazine magazine release so when you push the button that's what you're doing this thing keeps everything aligned however when you want to take it out of the gun because this ledge here can't get past the frame so in order to take it apart, what you do is you push it all the way in and then you can rotate it. And when you rotate it, now it's flush with the body of the, of the, of the release itself so the whole thing can come out. And if you really want to get in there and clean it, then you just unscrew it half, that, half a turn and that comes right off. So that's the magazine release. Uh, the Let's go ahead and take the slide lock off now if you look carefully at the slide lock what you'll see is that it's pretty tiny spring that they've made tiny grooves one groove in the frame and one groove in the piece and that's not only providing the tension on the piece but it's also keeping it in the frame so since we want to take it out of the frame we're going to come in here with a small punch and lift up on the spring that's in the frame and just let it go at that point the whole thing will come off and you can see that mechanism there's a long leg to this spring and a short leg the long leg is the one that goes into the body of the slide lock itself and the short one is the one that goes into the frame now un unusually this is a spring that actually operates against the direction of its coiling so it actually is uncoiling when it flexes so don't over flex this spring because that's a, a weaker way to make a spring 
you do that when it's around a pin like this because if you went the other way where the spring coiled to do what it needed to do it would tend to bind on the pin as the coils get smaller when it flexes so anyway should you need to take that off feel free uh, there's not a whole lot of rocket science to how these guys work either the magazine will have a area that you know the follower of the magazine has a space that space is going to come up right under here and so when the last round comes up it will catch whoops try to manipulate that it sits here normally when the la when the follower comes up that'll tilt it up so that's what's going on there that's what that ledge on the follower is for normal rounds don't stick out that far so it goes right past them but when the follower itself is the last round boom last round hold open the slide just runs into this and actually in this case I think the slide runs into this part of it as opposed to the part that you actually can see which is kind of nice because it does get torn up when it runs into the slide all right um there is a single pin holding in the trigger bar and we're just gonna knock that guy out don't think he's directional if he is then I got it in the right direction Let's see. oh actually he feels like he's directional too yeah he's got a wider end so again I take that back it is directional make sure you push it out uh, now I have to wonder if I put it in backwards before So it slides in easily on both sides and bottoms out where the head is. Wow. So I guess what I would say is if you start knocking this thing out and you get it halfway and it's still hard, then you went the wrong way. So go back out and go out the other way. Because essentially, once you get it that first eighth of an inch out, it should just come out easily. There shouldn't be any more friction. Unfortunately, I'm not 100% sure whether I was paying attention the first time when I took this apart so sorry about that uh, mine in this case went from right to left I hope that's the standard uh, like I said if you get it halfway and it's sticking stop and go the other way now uh, if you had a good enough light you could poke your eyes in there for a look-see and see that uh, the spring of the firing pin is actually going into a, a groove in the in the in the lock so right now my lock is on fire, which means it's in a position where that's all uh, engaged. If you have your key, that's great. If not, some needle nose pliers will do, and you can grab this and spin it from fire to safe, at which point that changes all of that stuff and will give you more real estate to actually get that spring out. Uh, same with putting it back in. It's much easier to put it in with the lock on safe uh, because with it on fire, it's kind of blocked and the spring tends to hang up and that's really hard to get it back in on. So I like to just switch that to safe because it kind of helps push the piece out. So um, once you're getting it out, by the way, you rotate it. Uh, you kind of got to bring it forward, down, and then backwards like that. And it will end up in the trigger guard like that. If you go all the way the other direction... Uh, ain't gonna work it's gonna get stuck there's just not enough space except in that position notice there is a bushing in here as well this bushing is holding the spring in place under a fairly good amount of tension but it's kind of nice because the firing pin uh, excuse me the trigger pin uh, just rides in the bushing and uh, you know the bushing spins freely on it which means that if you don't, if you're not replacing this spring, there's no reason to actually take these apart unless, or, or, or if you're cleaning it and you're detailing it, you can. So we'll go ahead and do it. But uh, again, if it's clean and you don't need to do this, save it because it's kind of a hard spring to get back into position. Not super hard, just just annoying enough. We'll go ahead and do this real quick while we're here. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Once 
the bushing is out, the spring itself is under a little bit of pressure still, which means once we take the punch out, it's not going to want to line up all the way. So it's pretty easy to remember the orientation. The fancy curly bit is the front, um, and then the flat bit uh, just lays down uh, on the inside of it. So now the challenge is, you know, no matter how you line this up in there, it's not going to want to go all the way down. So getting the bushing back in, you're going to have to take another punch. It's small enough to get in there, but sturdy enough that you'll be able to put pressure on it. And you're going to have to pull it down into the right position to let the bushing go through. So I'm going to use this punch to basically uh, manipulate that spring and to the point where the bushing can get started. So first I'll start the bushing just into the trigger body, and then I'm going to try and get that manipulated down and get the bushing through as many of the coils as I can. I've got it through all but one. So let's get that last coil down. Maybe try it with the slightly smaller punch. Mm -hmm. Again, keeping some pressure on the bushing to try and keep everything going the way I want it to. Alright, now I've got the bushing through all the coils, so all we have to do is align the bushing with the hole itself. Man, that coil is way cattywampus. Actually, yeah, uh, abort! Alright, so what I didn't catch when I was doing that is that this was not this was kind of in the in the hole recess a little bit further than it should have been and I didn't want to pinch it in there that's why one of the coils was staying further spread apart than other than the others so I'm going to go in from the other side this time and again try and just position everything a little bit better as I go so do 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 get my spring in place surface, see if that helps at all. Put my bushing in from this side. There we go. And uh, just want to try and get it so that as I push my bushing down, I'm going to get that last leg of the bushing far enough back. don't want to go. So <clears throat> the challenge I'm having is that this short leg of the bushing, if you notice, there's a circular recess in there, but the short leg needs to be all the way on the back here. If the short leg is down in this recess, the bushing is going to go in all wonky and, and not behave. So it kind of means we got to get the bushing in sort of you know, from the back first, or at least get it under tension in that direction. And, uh, then get the bushing in there. So, with all of these at the same time, try it one more time. So notice that my short leg of the bushing is actually visible in the back and not tucked down in there. And in this case, what I ended up doing is I came down with a punch on top of the coils and was able to squish them. It's a little bit of luck because that's going to tend to want it to shoot out one end or the other, but 
Eventually you'll be able to manipulate it into place and just remember that the long hook should be out the front and that the coils should be relatively even and not bulged up. If one's bulged up, chances are this leg has gotten stuck underneath. <clears throat> Hopefully now you have a better sense of why I said don't do that if you don't have to. Hang on a minute. Looks like Windows 10 wants to upgrade. Uh, no, stop. Okay, hopefully that didn't monkey up the recording. Is that wire in frame two? No, all right. So, where were we? All right, that's the trigger. Uh, let's see, what's left? Okay, the, um, the hammer strut. Oh, this has got a very interesting spring system. This metal leaf spring is actually the sear and sear spring built into one. And this coil spring and hammer strut are actually attached. This is actually one piece unit in there, or at least that the, the, let me, let me rephrase that. The hammer strut spring and sear become an assembly the way they're attached. The key is you can take this out in one of two ways. You can knock this pin out and the whole thing will come out the bottom, or you can take the hammer pin out and the whole thing can come out through the top. Um, putting it back together, however, I recommend always having this pin in first and getting that in place and putting it all back in there afterwards. I tend to leave this pin in pretty much the whole time because essentially, um, with the sear out of the way and the hammer all the way forward, it's not under a whole lot of pressure. So you can just push the hammer pin. Now it has a, a narrow end here with a, a, a shaped bit that holds on to this, but the, there's a wide end on the left side. So just push it out the left side of the gun, hang on to the hammer and the pin should just draw right out at which point um, a lot of things can now fall out of the gun to an extent. The hammer can come out for sure. The uh, ejector is got it's bound up by one other pin. The disconnector also bound by that same pin. However, the safety is uh, not completely bound by it. So if you shake the safety around, doo -doo -doo -doo, it will actually come out because it just sits on that pin like this and rides up and down so it's not actually going through the smaller pin and as I said this assembly will now not be held in by anything so let's take a minute to look at it and uh, I will caution you not to disassemble this if you don't have a really good reason this spring is under a lot of tension and the hammer strut is gone through a hole and then it's been rotated so all you have to do to take it apart is rotate the hammer strut 90 degrees and it will be apart but getting it back in there involves being able to compress that really hard far, you know, far enough to get on. Oh, now the spring's going to be another, you know, half inch longer and it's a hefty spring. So just by hand, I can barely get that to compress a whole lot. So without, you know, it already being in place, guiding it into that hole would suck. Uh, you know, maybe with something else as leverage, you could get it in there, but I'm just going to say, don't, if you don't have to, should it come apart on you, just remember the hammer strut, you know, in the 90 degree position, will be able to poke its head through there. And then as soon as it's through, rotate it and it'll hold in there because it does get, it's a little, you know, it's a rounded end like that. Hopefully you can see that, uh, end. so anyway, I don't want to take this apart, but I will show you the other parts of it. While it is stamped metal, it's a fairly substantial piece of stamped metal and it is hardened because this is the sear. So it is polished and hardened because this is uh, what actually holds on to the hammer in its uh, half cock and I'm sorry, that's the half cock safety notch there and then the actual cock position. The trigger bar will grab this and pull it away. So. From this side we can see what's going on when the gun is fired in single action anyway the trigger bar is going to pull this forward which lets the hammer come down in double action the trigger bar will be pulling uh, back on the whole thing so we can actually look at those so trigger bar engagement uh, surfaces trigger bar is going to pull the sear out right there so this 
back ledge of the trigger bar will pull the sear away from the hammer and uh, in um, double action it will actually hook under the hammer there under the back leg of the hammer and pull the hammer all the way back and then slip off and bang. Uh, so again this little ledge here is where the single action trigger engagement and then the hammer. Um, hammer has kind of a classic hammer strut uh, design that's kind of neat. Um, you drill out a hole all the way through but then you mill out a shelf and that means that this piece is perfectly round and actually engages in the hole um, and then you just have this other little shelf that was straight cut uh, that gives you access to the hole but that gives you a perfectly round surface that the hammer rotates the hammer strut uh, holding it backwards of course the hammer strut rotates around and then of course the actual pivot around the, the pin uh, thar. So nothing we haven't seen a million times before. Now what's left in here is a space a spacer bushing, the disconnector and the extractor. Now here's an important thing. If you look closely at this pin, you should see a little mark on the top and bottom on the frame itself where the frame has been peened over. On the left side, the grip will hold this pin in and the pin cannot drift out because the grip is there. But on the right side, the trigger bar is there and moving around and all the rest of it. So the frame itself has to hold this pin in. If you knock this pin out from left to right, you're, you've hosed everything up. Uh, you will have unpeened it and the pin will then be able to drift. So you will need to re-peen it back in so that the pin basically stops at the frame. So that means when you're taking it out, always drive it out towards the left side of the gun and not the other way around or you will monkey up your frame. And uh, with that out, we will just check each piece in its orientation. The extractor, not real rocket science, it's just got two pins in there. Uh, for alignment nothing else it doesn't actually rotate around either of those pins it just sits in there in place and is the extractor the bushing will fall free and then lastly is the disconnector which I was trying to hold on to before I dropped it so you could see how it actually sits so with this pin it's fixed and it can it can rotate around this pin because it's not a tight fit but basically it's designed to just move up and down like that. So when something pushes straight down on it, it's actually going to move at an angle. And then that uh, will also uh, bump into the, the sear to cause it to let go. Uh, we'll look at exactly where that pushes against everything once it's reassembled. It's easier to see. It's hard to picture it from this angle but that's, that's its position in there. So uh, other bits of the gun that you can take out, but that I, again, I recommend not. You can knock out the barrel pin just to see if your barrel comes out. Mine does not, and I'm not gonna go buy a press for this gun because a press would probably cost half the price of the gun itself. However, in theory, uh, in terms of how does this come out, should you get your barrel off, um, you would be able to just start pushing on this side and lifting this further and further out and it would eventually um, disengage. So we can also come in here with a, a punch and take some of that pressure off and then uh, when we get to the right point we'll be able to lift this piece out. Um, it's kind of a pain in the butt to get back in. Go ahead and take it all the way out just so everyone can see what I'm talking about. It's not real crazy it sits in there and that piece is pushing up on it so it wants to stay in this place but if you rotate it then the, that flat part of the cutout comes down pushes the rest of it down so this piece is just a shelf and that flat part moving up and down that you see moving in the hole that's the part that perfectly mates up with this big semicircular cutout um, if I pull this punch all the way out here you see the problem it ain't coming out because there's no space it has to be the barrel has to be gone for it to come out 
and I am not digging the barrel out of this guy. So I will uh, also have to have a relatively substantial punch just to get the force on it to get it down. So I'm going to use one punch to put in another punch and then push that all the way down to get my lever back in. And there I'm springing again. Similar on the, similarly uh, adjust, arranged is this. I could, if you rotate this around even more, you can see the detents where it snaps into place. I think you might even be able to see that if I just put it back on fire. Yeah, you can, uh, if you get a view under there, that big healthy detent. So there's a spring and pin sitting in there. Uh, so I'm guessing that it's pretty much probably straight back and forth between these without seeing it. That's my best guess. But the point is, if you knocked this out, how are you going to get that back in there if it's not somehow maintained in the frame? My guess is that you couldn't. If you had the barrel off and this piece out, then you could probably put those in and they would hold everything in. But I don't want to gut this one out without having the right tools to take that barrel off. So this is as far as we're going with this guy today. And again, for ease of uh actually for reassembly this should be fine that i put it back on fire all right so if you wanted to knock this pin out you know feel free there's not really a reason to this has a nice groove in it so that it sits uh on that pin the pin does not go through it it just sits on there it's it marks the bottom of everything so reassembly is uh just the opposite of uh, the disassembly. So we'll put this little guy in first. And again, um, he doesn't actually have a large... I don't think he has a larger side. Oh, I take it back. He does. I'm sorry. Once again, large side of the pin on the, on the uh, left side of the gun and um, don't push it too far through so you don't mangle it and we're just gonna get him through all of his bits so the extractor was one bit so we'll set the extractor on and then i'm going to use a pair of pliers just to help hold the bushing in place and then I'm going to stare at my pile of parts and try and figure out if the bushing rolled off the table. Where did my bushing go? Oh, there it is. Rolled over there to where the slide was. So because my fingers are too fat to easily fit in here, I'm going to you know, hold the, hold the bushing with the pliers, bring the pin back, and then line the bushing up and get it most of the way through. And... Uh, once that's done, I do try and keep the extractor on the right side. It should always have just enough clearance that you can flip it around to where it's supposed to be. But, um, you know, in a perfect world, it would just stay there on its own. So that's what we're going to basically try and do. We're going to try and keep it on its side, keep the pin from falling too far out with a finger, get the bushing tapped in a little bit, and get the disconnector in place excuse me, the decocker. And so for the decocker, oops, I just ran it through the wrong hole. Come on. Again, realizing that you just have to make sure that it's going to be on the right orientation once it's all the way in. It doesn't have to necessarily go in correctly. Let's get it lined up. All right, so that's the decocker lined up which means two of our two of the three are done and these are the only three that we actually have to have in place in order to seat the pin back in because remember the firing pin safety doesn't actually go through the little hole it uh it just rides along the little hole so anyway i'm going to tap this back through not over tap it just to flush so that we don't mangle the peening on that side and uh you know then we can get all these flipped around to their correct root you know orientation 
eventually. Come on, fat fingers. All right. Now, with everybody in the correct orientation, we should see that there's just enough space on that side to get the firing pin safety hooked over that pin. And that means that all of our pieces are basically now ready uh, to get lined up with the hammer pin. So before we do that, let's talk about one last thing real quick. This spring here, the trigger return spring slash disconnector spring. Um, not trigger return spring, I'm sorry. It's a trigger bar spring slash disconnector spring. See how the, the frame is peened in in these two spots? If this broke, then yes, you would have to get it out and, and it, that would unpeen these places because it actually turns and goes into the frame. So you'd have to rip the whole thing out, put the new spring in, and then repeen it in place because only this peening of the frame holds that spring in, which is why we don't take it out because there's only so many times you can bend the aluminum before, well, before it says no more, I'm done. So now we gotta get everything with the hammer lined up and back in at pretty much the same time. So I'm gonna start making sure these guys are still, you know, in the right orientation. And we're just gonna kinda lay them in place. Do, 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 do. And seat that down there. And we're just gonna kinda hold it more or less in place. And then we're gonna guide the hammer in. And what we're guiding here is that the that you know the hammer strut is gonna end up in the hammer where we want it. Whoops. I'll put the firing pin safety back in again in a second. This was not supposed to be nearly this challenging in my demonstration. Sorry, pointing the gun right at the camera. Point of all this was just set the hammer on down on the strut and make sure that the strut is actually in there. Now you'll probably have to use your finger to get the disconnector away from uh, the hammer strut. Oh my gosh, what am I doing? I'm making a mess. All right. That was not easy or simple to follow, so we're starting over. I apologize. Let's try that one more time. We're gonna get our hammer in our hammer strut in place. And then we're gonna come down with the hammer. Of course, make sure the hammer is facing the right way. And then we're gonna make sure that that strut is in fact lined up with the hammer. Yes, all right. Beautiful. There, finally. So the hammer strut is now in the back of the hammer. We don't want to move it around too much. Uh, but what we are going to do now is line everything else up with a punch. Now, since this pin has a big fat head, it has to come in from the left to the right. So we'll use a punch going in the other direction for alignment. And here's just where we're going to rotate all the other pieces into place. So that's our disconnector. Uh, we know that on the outside of the disconnector, we have to get the firing pin uh, safety. So that again goes down in there and just lays down. So now we should be able to get through the disconnector, the firing pin safety. Excuse me, I keep saying disconnector, the decocker. So let's go in order. Firing pin safety, decocker, hammer, and then before I go all the way out the other side, make sure the ejector is flipped around and then we should be able to get through ta -da -da -da, the ejector as well so now the punch is holding everybody in place the hammer all these guys are free to move around but the punch is where the pin needs to go ta -da, the pin so now that we've done all that we're just gonna replace the pin the punch with the pin so again gently just kind of wiggling everything in place as we go the punch will pass through everything now you may have to push down on the hammer whoops epic fail epic fail sorry about that all right 
So, lining that all up one more time. Be a little more careful this time, actually. No oh, hell's bells, now I've missed the hammer. Have I missed the hammer? Yes. All right. Now we've got all the parts. I missed the hammer last time. Sorry about that. So once again, we're just going to guide. So keeping a finger on that pin, we're going to make sure that we get it through each component as we go. And then we should be able to kind of look in there as we go to each one. And we've got it through most of them. It's hung up on... Mm, which one? It's real close. This is just a little bit tricky because the hammer will be under just a tiny amount of tension. Um, uh, if, it, if you've accidentally cocked it, you can just pull the sear forward to uncock it and just keep manipulating that until you can see each of these guys uh, as as you go through each layer, figure out which one is still intruding on that hammer pin hole until it goes all the way through. And then it should be, you know, not flush, but the, the head of it will be flush on the other side and it'll be sticking out. And again, I did have to poke each one down a little bit, pull the sear away more than once, but everybody should now be in their correct place, which means you can cock it, if you something pushes the decocker, you can now see how the decocker is also um, the decocker makes the sear. So that that uh, this end here is the bottom of that big oval shaped decocker. It pushes out on the same part of the sear that the trigger bar grabs onto. So if we hold the firing pin safety out of the way, toot, 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 um, you can you can see the decocker oops, doing its thing. There we go. And then the trigger bar normally would grab both the firing pin safety and the sear at the same time and pull them out of the way, which would actually fire the gun. And uh, like I said, in, in single and in double action, the firing, the trigger bar will come far enough back to grab that back leg of the trigger and pull the whole thing forward. All right, what else do we need to put in in what order? <clears throat> Before we put the trigger bar on, we want to get the uh, magazine safety on since it's further towards the innards of the gun. Uh, in case you lose track of which way is up, remember that these shaped ends are dovetailed. They have to fit in the dovetail and that at the top there's a little grabber bar which has to come towards the outside to hang on to the next piece in line which will be the trigger bar. So putting this in we want it to be lined up there under the spring but over the frame and uh, just kind of guide it into make sure it's in both dovetails. And then when it comes to its spring we're going to do the opposite of what we did to put it together. We're going to go ahead and start it in its little hole so that it's in the right spot. And we're going to put the spring under tension just a little bit and guide it into its groove. And you can try and tuck it in back there. It'll, it'll work its way into wherever it's going to stay and be happy. But if we did that right, it should slide up and down in the dovetails and do its, do its thing there. So the trigger bar itself. Now, I said to move it to safe to make it easier to disassemble. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna stick with this, that if you move it back to fire, that makes it easier to assemble. We'll see if I'm lying or not. My theory is that, again, you lay the trigger bar in there and bring it up from the back where it has extra room. You wanna make sure that that little leg gets uh, where we want it to get, which is hooked into the safety mechanism. I hope you can make that out as I do that. Let's pull that back out just a little bit. 
as I bring this uh, bring the trigger up, that little little spring leg should actually get in there. So I'm going to have to compress it just a little bit to get it past the point. Um, basically, there's a little flex point where you right around the edge of the frame, and when it's popped in, it'll be lined up with the hole and the spring will be in there. If the spring pops out to the bottom, take the whole thing out, start over. Might be easier to switch it back to safe to get it past that point. The spring can get wedged in there if you're not careful. Don't be afraid to use the lock to, to make sure that the spring doesn't get hung up. And then we have the uh, trigger bar. And again, as far as I can tell, all the wide parts are on the left. So we will slide that into the uh, the, the trigger pivot point uh, into through the trigger through the frame and tap that in now what I just did I don't want to tap on any pieces even though that's relatively solid you want it the frame you know to be absorbing any extra force so I'm just going to lay it so that most of the metal of the frame is on my little hockey puck and again, we're just tapping till it's flush. We're not driving that all the way through. We don't want to waller out those holes. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and put the magazine safety in before we do the trigger bar, just because it's easier. Uh, again, the little ledge that sticks out it has to ride in that channel to get it in and what we're going to do is compress the spring all the way in turn it clockwise and it'll sink into the body of the magazine release drop it into place and then come in here again and now we're going to unscrew it and as soon as you unscrew it about 90 degrees you'll feel it pop back out and it's it's in there now we're free to do the trigger bar itself. Now, uh, here again, while we've been messing with it, the hammer pin has slipped out a little bit. Make sure that's all the way in. And we want to take our trigger bar and not only, excuse me, take our trigger bar spring and not only get it on the underside of the hammer, but all the way on the kind of inside of the frame. We really want that in there as we go because we have to get it under this piece. So we can either put the piece, uh, let's see. I think there's no easy way to do this all at once. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this with a fingernail and hold the spring down. And I'm gonna set this piece in there um, and manipulate it just enough so that it's under there. And now I should be able to come in here and lift that up and get it into the Oh, I said that terribly. Ignore everything I just said. That was a terrible example. I'm so sorry. <sighs> Magazine safety at the same time. A lot of things to be manipulating at once here. So let's go one at a time. We'll get it started in the, the large hole of the trigger. Okay, so that's part one. We need it to be underneath the spring, but we need the magazine safety on top of the trigger bar. So after we get the spring into its little groove we want to make sure that the magazine safety is caught on the far side of it and actually manipulating it so again to check that um, basically you know make sure you're holding the trigger the trigger bar should be pretty close to flush essentially so it's locked in there and um, if we manipulate the trigger a little bit, it should stay towards the bottom until we push that on. And that's that's really it. When you manipulate the magazine safety, you should be manipulating the trigger bar as well. I say magazine safety. Technically, it's a magazine disconnect. I don't know if it officially qualifies as a safety. Depends on, depends on whose sales literature you're reading. All right. This guy, uh, the... <clears throat> slide lock we remember the long leg of this spring is going to go on the slide lock side and the short leg towards the frame so we're going to start it off in that position and kind of just hold on to that long leg in the frame in the uh, in the piece and guide it into the frame and then you're going to say see rather the short leg sitting there on the frame itself now 
don't do this with something metal. Use either a fingernail or something plastic to guide it over the edge. If you use something metal, you'll scratch your nice brushed aluminum frame. So just, it's not a hugely tense thing. Um, I also use the end of my toothbrush to do things like that. So when I do have a piece of metal in a position like that, just you don't, you just want something non, uh, non abrasive so that you don't ding up your metal any more than you have to. So uh, that's everything. Everything should work, but again, if we just grab and start pulling the trigger, uh, everything can slide apart. So first of all, just pulling the trigger, nothing's gonna happen. If I do it enough, the whole trigger bar would walk out of the gun, but because the magazine release isn't tripped. So we put in magazine and notice that that's that uh, that little ledge on the bottom of the magazine is what pushes up the magazine disconnect. So now, um, uh, let's see what else. Magazine is in there. Last round lock. Oh, okay. The hammer. If the hammer is all the way forward, um, the trigger bar actually doesn't do anything because this is farther forward than the hammer can go when the slide is on the gun. The hammer would actually always there. It would be in that safety notch. That's as far as it would normally go with the gun assembled. So here we're in a position where the trigger bar can grab the hammer and begin to cock the hammer and even drop the hammer. Um, likewise, if it's in single action, this is what I said that the side of the gun holds everything together. I wasn't kidding. Let's see if I've There we go. Um, start that over, sorry. <clears throat> Again, hammer from here, the double action can grab it and it can do its thing. You don't wanna drop that as you know, any more than you have to, but you will manually have to pull the hammer back a little bit to test other stuff. Here's the single action, and again, uh, catching the hammer, but you can, you can see what happens. Now, the, um, the disconnect. So when the trigger bar is still up and I've pulled my trigger, the sear is being held out of the way. If the trigger bar is pushed down, and if you notice that this little crescent on the trigger bar is in the way of the rails, when the gun goes bang and cycles, it will push the trigger bar down. That pushes it off of the sear, meaning the sear is now in a position to catch the, the hammer again. The reset is simply when the trigger bar moves far enough back to, to get behind the sear again. So as I start to let up on the trigger, I'm only holding the trigger bar from falling out of the gun. It will pop up. Uh, north on its own. Now it's behind the sear again. So that's my reset. So here is the the fire. Bang. Gun is cycling, causing disconnect. Hammer is cocked. I come off the trigger. There's my reset. And now if I pull the trigger, I get another single action shot. So that's the site, the, the, the functional functionality of the thing. Uh, I think that's all of the parts. So it's always a good sign when there's no extra parts. And so we'll put our grips back on. And uh, oh, right. So as I as you saw, the trigger bar loves to walk out the side of the gun. The grips are what holds that on. So again if you're having weird problems make sure your right side grips are tight i've had a lot of people come in with fairly damaged guns the whole problem was the right side grip had come a little bit unscrewed and the trigger bar popped out and things got bad fast after that but uh oh that's the other thing this little goofy lug piece that we didn't take out that on most grips that i've seen there is a actual hole for that lug so that 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 lug actually goes into the grips to help them align and on this side I've got to put the battery cover in as well as line it up with said lug I wonder if that's the other piece I never even noticed it had an on off wouldn't that be funny if this is not just dead batteries I just got this so I haven't actually fired it or anything I thought these were just dead batteries. I didn't see it had what looks to be an absolute on-off switch as well. 
which is a little strange for a laser. Uh, nothing like a, a gun that's ready when you need it, except you have to remember to push the on-off switch for the laser. No, it's also dead batteries. Oh, well. Sorry. Not that a laser is the most exciting thing you've ever seen, but I didn't buy it for the laser. I bought it because it was a broken gun. Uh, now, while well, don't go crazy and over-tighten your grips, it is an aluminum frame. The steel screw will win out in the fight with the aluminum frame. Use a drop of blue Loctite or nail polish, something, not red Loctite, you know, something um, that will hold it in place against vibration, but you know, still let you take it apart. If you over-tighten these, you'll strip your frame and be a sad, sad person. So... Uh, again, if you're trying to figure out which way this goes on, if it flops on and flops out, that's the wrong way. It should. That last coil is ever so slightly smaller. That's the rear coil. We're going to need to push our takedown lever to the down position and hold it. I also recommend having the gun cocked when you put it back together. Because to put it back together, you tuck the spring into the slide and then pull that straight back, guiding the barrel into the front of the slide, pulling it all the way to the back, lowering it onto the rails, and guiding it forward. So it's a pretty good amount of force because you've got to get it all the way to the back and all the way off. So all the way to the back and on, and now you're locked. And again, nothing happens because the magazine disconnect, the decocker in action, ooh, that was exciting put a magazine in so that we can actually test it. Also, uh, that's the other thing that happens when that decocker goes down, it also holds the trigger bar down. So the trigger is completely disconnected uh, when, when the safety is on, so nothing happens. Once you do that, however, now you're back in for a double action, a reset, and then a single action. That's it. That's the Beretta Thunder 380. Hope you had fun. Stay safe out there.